Hello and welcome to the Wednesday, January 4th, 2022 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Well, in diaries today, I wrote up a little bit about uh, profiling hosts or fingerprinting them using NTP, the network time protocol. There are some well-known artifacts, like, for example, the different host names that uh, different operating systems use in order to synchronize their time. Like, for example, time.microsoft.com or time.apple.com. But also within the pool.ntp.org domain, you have a couple of subdomains that are used by specific vendors. What's not so well documented and something that I sort of took a quick step on here is artifacts within the NTP payload itself. In order to make this more reproducible, what I did is I basically collected the first NTP uh, packet that comes from an operating system after it's being booted. And there were a number of different artifacts, like for example, some of the older NTP clients send packets from port 123 223. The newer ones tend to use high ports. Also, what polling interval is being used uh, changes a little bit between uh, different uh, clients. And then also, the client, as part of its request, is sending its own timestamp. Well, some of the clients actually are randomizing this timestamp sort of as an additional security feature. If you're interested, uh, well, uh, take a look at the diary and uh, if you have any input to this if you observe anything different here then uh, please uh, let me know uh, but note that some of these things like for example whether or not the clock is synchronized or not or some of these flags or things uh, like the polling interval uh, they may change as uh, the NTP client uh, keeps running for a while these days, if you purchase a car, it often comes with the option, at least, uh, to use a mobile application in order uh, to gain certain remote control functionality over the car, whether this is locking or unlocking the car or just uh, tracking the location and uh, service intervals and such of the car. But uh, at its core, these mobile applications usually connect to some form of web service and that is then being used to interact with the car. Sam Curry and some friends now published a blog post summarizing some of the work they did looking into these mobile applications and other systems being offered by car manufacturers in order to remote control cars. Their scope didn't just stick to the mobile application, but then also looked at, for example, enterprise systems within the car manufacturer that these mobile applications connected to and and uh, well, uh, the list of vulnerabilities is very long and there are sort of a couple of uh, repeats here. Let me just uh, very quickly here list uh, some of the manufacturers and some of the vulnerabilities that were uh, discovered here. For example, for Kia, Honda, Infinity, Nissan, Acura, but also for Hyundai and uh, for uh, Genesis. Uh, they were able uh, to do a full remote lock and unlock, also engine start, engine stop. Uh, Mercedes-Benz, it sort of more went into their corporate systems. Uh, they were able to discover some uh, GitHub instances and such that were behind improperly configured a single uh, sign-on. Also, similar vulnerabilities for BMW and Rolls-Royce. Uh, Ferrari, a zero interaction account takeover for any Ferrari customer account. Not sure uh, what you can do with these, but uh, probably uh, nothing uh, good. And uh, like I said, the list goes on. Ford, Reviver, Porsche, Toyota, Jaguar, uh, and then of course, Cirrus XM, uh, which we also had uh, recently uh, vulnerable in their system. Uh, but here it's more about about leaked AWS keys. So more or less uh, any manufacturer, any car manufacturer they tested had some severe vulnerabilities and uh, more details in Sam Curry's uh, blog post. 
Well, I imagine that among listeners of this podcast, one of the hot Christmas gifts was the Flipper Zero, this wireless multi-tool that has gotten sort of a lot of attention and is, of course, like many important holiday gifts, difficult to get these days. Looks like a couple of fishing sites are taking advantage of that and set up uh, fake Flipper Zero shops uh, with uh, lookalike uh, domain names. Flipper-Zero.shop or FlipperZeroStore.net are uh, some of uh, the uh, host names or domain names uh, being used for these fake shops. So be careful out there and uh, only order them direct from the manufacturer, which of course at this point is out of stock. And that domain name is flipper0.1. And in miscellaneous patches, we do have an update for Trend Micro's maximum security. Apparently there is a privilege escalation vulnerability here. We uh, do see them a lot in uh, these security solutions because they often have to run with elevated privileges and then they do things like uh, decompress and unpack a code in order to exploit this net hacker needs to place a malicious file on the system and that then results in a privilege escalation for this user. Well, and if you don't have enough of me, there is also a new packet Tuesday out that deals with IP options. And that's it for today. Thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.